basically is uh, sort of my, uh, I, you know, sort of, uh, I would say, uh, motivation to be a part of this process and to work with these wonderful people. And uh, also, we don't, uh, what we don't want to be is we don't want to be a one trick pony. So we don't want to just come up with one thing and say, okay, here it is. And uh, we have, we've done this and we've done our part. Uh, we, we are working on a pipeline of a bunch of different ideas in the orthopedic and trauma field that we need to be able to de develop in Armenia. They're not rocket science. This is not hard things, but it just requires work and dedication. And, and I'm proud to tell you that we have a lot, number of ideas about some of the other things that we want to work on and take this idea and turn it into multiple product lines so eventually be able to cover a large number of the sort of orthopedic and trauma needs for use in Armenia and similar developing country markets. And so uh, I think the future is bright, uh, thanks to you guys, and, uh, and we will be able to accomplish a number of good things uh, uh, with this project. And I'm uh, grateful to the AUA for uh, having the foresight to, to allow us to work on this and to let us explore this idea, even though it, this, uh, has, this process has taken a couple of years now, but it's important that we go through this process as a learning experience for me, for the folks over there, and be able to figure out how we need to move things from point A to point B in order to, to, to be able to harness the creative energy of our youth and on the expertise that is in Armenia and, you know, and in the diaspora to bring this all together towards a common goal and common good for our, for our people. So, um, to me, this is an important, important issue in terms of care for orthopedics and trauma, not, not because of uh, my background, but also because of the fact that our homeland is sitting on an earthquake fault line. We are currently technically at war with an enemy, and we remember last April what happened. So trauma care is essential for me in terms of a national security point for Armenia, and I think uh, we must do our point to make sure that you know we can be self-sufficient and we can take care of our own. So that's basically all I have at the moment. And, uh, and then there's a small animation that uh, Levon has diligently uh, edited uh, this show. And, uh, and I can give you a quick comments as we go through the video. And then after that, uh, Sarkis will uh, talk about the goals and the objectives of the work that we have done. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Arjun. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here what you see is basically uh, a patient comes in, and this is called a trauma table that they, they normally use for trauma cases that allows the surgeon to sort of rotate the patient and put the, it's not like a regular surgery bed that you would imagine. It's an awkward looking thing, but it allows you basically to strap the patient on it and rotate them at different parts because orthopedic surgery is you have to have access from different sides and also be able to image. So that big machine that you saw there, it's a C-arm, it's an X-ray machine that allows the surgeons to see where things are um, and where to put the, the, uh, you know, the implant. So here, you take an image, you create a template, sort of. And keep in mind, this surgery gets done in like 40 minutes. So this is not a long process. So here, you make an incision, basically, where uh, at the top of the greater trochanter where the implant is supposed to go. So as you see in the neck of the femur, what happens is the neck is being the part that goes to that round head. That's where most of the fractures occur when folks fall down. And so um, this implant, you go in, you sort of create a portal so you can go in there, and then um, you ream that hole, make it larger, and then the physicians, actually the doctors, have to physically move the patient from outside and, you know, with little tools to be able to break this. Sometimes these bones you know sort of break and they stay at the same place it's a non-displaced fracture but sometimes the head fractures and it rotates so now the surgeon has to from the outside manipulate that bone to put it close to where it's supposed to be as best as possible and then reduce the fracture which means fix it uh, by these means so this is the the basically the nail that you see this is uh and this is the handle that is used for insertion so you create the hole in the, you know, uh, basically in the femur for it to go in. Then you create the remit so that it matches the contour of the nail. Then you put this nail in there with this handle. You kind of 
uh, put it in place, advance it in the right place, and everything that you need to do is templated on this uh, handle. So now you go in and you kind of assign where the line is, so where the cephalic point, the point, you know, the, the other piece that goes into the neck uh, needs to go in there. So you can advance it through the same uh, handle. So now you align it in both, you know, X and Y planes. You make sure everything looks good. And then you go in and you uh, make sure that it's aligned. And once uh, you, you, you think that you have a good position for this to be put on, then you advance the part that goes into the cephalic part. And here it shows that, you know, you do the incision, then you go in, you make the, you read the hole, and you put in the guide wire. And um, like I said, this is basically sterile carpentry. And then you go in and you advance the cephalic screw. Now the whole thing is in place. You can see that, you know, you have the nail and you have the cephalic component in there. You go in and you put a set screw just like you would do in, a, you know, in another mechanical device and you tie this down and uh, basically put the whole thing together. And now you use the same handle to put in a screw at the bottom so you tie the implant into the bone so there is no more rotation and it's locked in its place. And that's pretty much it. This is all done with basically three tiny incisions. So, which makes the recovery easier because there's not large wounds that you uh, uh, that you have to you know recover from, other than the act you know the fracture itself. So, makes the process nice and easy. And now this patient is closed up and goes into recovery, and uh, you have a uh, system. Now, let's say if something terrible happens and you have to remove this implant, the same handle that we have that we used. Can be actually we've designed it so that you can remove this implant if this patient suffers another fracture or if let's say the patient ends up with um, arthritis of the of the joint and now they have to actually go in and do a total hip so now you can go ahead and remove this piece and then do a total hip surgery on that patient so uh, this is sort of just the, the workflow and uh, this is a very sort of uh, redacted version of the whole video because of time but there's many, many, many steps in process that currently are used. And uh, uh, what we have done is we have taken more, a lot of these redundant steps and extra equipment, the tools that are not needed, and simply turned them into uh, a system that could deliver the same care with a limited number of components and improved design and uh, sort of process. So that's pretty much it, uh, what I have to say at this, one, at this point. And uh, turning over to Sarkis now. Thank you, boss. Thank you, Ara. Thank you for this detailed uh, description and introduction and problem definition. Uh, so after you already have the notion about uh, what is uh, this project about, uh, I want to uh, turn to the goal and the objectives of the goal uh, of the project. Uh, I should say that these are uh, uh, visionary. This is a visionary goal. Usually I am uh, more modest in uh, defining my, my goals in uh, different projects, but now I, I, I should convey the uh, goal of the team. I cannot be uh, less ambitious. And I think that the project itself uh, is useless, uh, that uh, we... Uh, uh, that we um, uh, introduce is a uh, less ambitious goal. Uh, why it is uh, visionary, uh, you will see uh, rather uh, when I um, introduce this graph of the objectives. So the goal is the development and implementation of a simplified intramedullary nail system that will be affordable for the local customer and compatible in the regional market. You have seen that the system is uh, not so simple. It is uh, quite sophisticated and complicated. Uh, I should say that the uh, cost of the uh, operation, uh, the first year of treatment rather, uh, is $40,000 and uh, only 15% of, uh, of this cost is the implant itself, but even Six uh, thousand dollars is not uh, uh, so economical even for Americans. So we, uh, we uh, needed to simplify the system uh, to make it affordable for our uh, local customer. And uh, we 
set some objectives. Some of them are solved within uh, these walls. Uh, some of them cannot be uh, done so. Uh, that's why uh, I would say it is a visionary. So the simplified model uh, of the prototype is designed. And uh, then uh, we are just now comparing it with the original model to say uh, to see uh, if it will su satisfy all the requirements, uh, structural re requirements and uh, fatigue requirements. Uh, so in order to have a better understanding, we should uh, fabricate a, a, a prototype, a kit of prototypes. And uh, we already did it, only part of them. And this prototype should serve to implement uh, cadaveric tests on, the, on them. Uh, this will be done in uh, Harvard Medical School. And uh, this is to ensure that they uh, they're comply to the uh, ASTM standard. And uh, then uh, the, the rest is something that uh, we need some support from outside. Uh, one of them is the business plan, and then we need uh, to conduct a market analysis. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this approach is uh, new for Armenia, and uh, the, there should be uh, uh, trained local specialists that uh, will be able to implement it, this methodolo methodology. Uh, also, investors are needed and uh, we need to set up the production because what we have is a production of uh, prototypes and it is quite different from uh, mass production or serial production. Uh, there, then also uh, we should adjust, or not we of course, but uh, the field should be adjusted and prepared for the implementation, uh, I, I mean the legislative and the regularity, uh, regulatory field. Okay, so uh, this is also a kind of report of what is done, uh, and we started with. Uh,